Hello friends, are you someone who is parent of a teenager and you are observing that as your child is growing up, he or she is experiencing musculoskeletal aches and pains? I'm pretty sure you must be worried about this. Pain is a cause of concern among a lot of parents. Sometimes when they go to doctors, doctors just ignore it saying it's a growth pain, it's just due to posture, technology use, etc, etc. But sometimes this pain just don't go. And that's the time when it requires a serious consideration, proper medical diagnosis and treatment. In this video, I'm going to share with you reasons which are less talked about when it comes to musculoskeletal pain, especially in teenagers. Let's get started. But by the way, before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel because in this channel, we come up with tons of educational video at the same time exercise tutorials that are absolutely backed by evidence and designed by expert physiotherapist. I am Dr. Meghna Dave. I'm the founder and CEO of Health Q Rehab and I come up with 16 plus years of experience in helping patients from different age group, different set of musculoskeletal and movement related disorders. So make sure to follow me on Instagram as well. So friends, whenever a child or a teenager experience pain, the first and the commonest reason due to which the pain can come could be due to growth spurts. Now when a child transition and attains puberty, there are a lot of hormonal changes that the body goes through. There is change in the shape of bone, there is change in the size and length of muscle as well. Sometimes there is a mismatch between the length of the bone and the length of the muscle. This mismatch can give the sense of discomfort to these muscles and can be a concerning cause of pain. This is one common reason but many a times just ignored and not treated. So make sure the first thing that you should definitely check is this pain coming due to the growth spurt or a change in the hormonal issues. The next condition that can lead to growth spurt a condition called as Atlas Delanos syndrome. Yes, you heard me right. This term sounds very complicated, but this condition majorly stands for a disorder where due to genetics, there is defect in the connective tissue, leading to hypermobility of skin, joint, muscles and ligaments. Eventually, it gives the symptom of chronic pain and many a times it just gets overlooked considering it as in growth pain. Here, genetic diagnosis and a proper evaluation is the key to identify the cause and working towards it. Let's talk about the third condition due to which a child can experience musculoskeletal pain. That is chronic fatigue syndrome. This is also an unknown disorder, rarely understood well and that's why can give symptom of chronic pain in a teenager. This condition in medical terms is called as myalgic encephalomyelitis. The diagnosis majorly depends on history and the type of symptoms that the child or the teenager is experiencing and explaining. A thorough evaluation is the key for proper diagnosis. Management lies in doing regular physiotherapy practices that helps in strengthening the muscles at the same time improving the flexibility of the muscles. That takes me to the next disorder which is benign joint hypermobility syndrome. In benign joint hypermobility syndrome, again, there is hypermobility of the joint, which means the joints of the child are more mobile than normal. And this can give symptoms of pain as the muscles gets overstretched and overworked over a period of time. This makes these muscles more prone to injury and strain, giving the symptoms of chronic pain. The treatment lies in strengthening these muscles as they are more prone to get into strain. And doing a lot of weight bearing exercises and weight training helps to improve the joint positioning at the same time joint stability, which helps in preventing this pain. Now, let's talk about the next disorder, which is complex regional pain syndrome, also called as reflex sympathetic dystrophy. Due to injury, and swelling, there is constant pressure that falls on the muscles, giving the symptoms of pain. This pain will be majorly after an injury or as an inflammatory disease, due to which there will be an edema or swelling in the entire hand or else leg region. The child can also see some changes in the skin and the temperature of the skin also increases, giving the symptoms of pain much more than a musculoskeletal pain. The treatment of this 
particular condition relies not only on physiotherapy but at the same time medical management is also very crucial here. Regular medical management, physiotherapy exercises along with right type of positioning and lifestyle modification is the key to manage this problem. The sixth condition that now I'm going to talk about is a condition called as fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a disorder which is very common in adults where the sensitivity to the pain is much higher. There are some chemical changes in the brain due to which there is a negative loop that has been formed. Every pain experience increases the release of neurotransmitter in the brain due to which the sensitivity to the pain is high. This pain will vary in intensity and vary in location. Sometimes the pain might felt around the neck, shoulder, back or legs etc. Fibromyalgia syndrome can be diagnosed with the help of history itself. If there are more than 10 variable points of pain in the body and this pain is associated with stress and anxiety and this pain just don't go away uh, along with rest at the same time, if this pain is not associated with an injury, at that time, it's easily diagnosed as a condition called as fibromyalgia. This particular type of condition requires cognitive behavioral therapy as a method of treatment. Cognitive behavioral therapy along with regular exercise regime helps to reduce the sensitivity to the pain and thus helps an individual to recover out of it. Now let's move on to the next condition, which is Vitamin D deficiency. We all Indians to an extent are deficient when it comes to vitamin D and B12. As the child grows up in the age, this deficiency increases giving the symptoms of aches and pains. When your child is attaining puberty, go for a blood check. See whether vitamin D levels and B12 levels are adequate. And if not, then take right level of supplementation in order to get rid of the musculoskeletal pain that's coming associated with the vitamin D deficiency. Juveline primary fibromyalgia syndrome. This is a pediatric variation of it. This type of fibromyalgia can be felt little early in life, which means that before the child attains puberty, he or she can start complaining of musculoskeletal pain of unknown cause moving in different areas of the body. If that is the case, then we would classify the child falling into this category of juveline fibromyalgia syndrome. Here, the treatment again lies in sensitizing the muscles to tolerate pain at the same time, doing regular physical activity, improving the muscle coordination and flexibility so that the movements become simpler and smoother and helps the muscles to get back to normal. Now let's talk about the next condition, which is Lyme disease is an infectious disorder. Post-infection, if the child is experiencing pain, at that time we would classify it as chronic Lyme disease. The diagnosis of this condition is a little difficult as the viral infections and other kind of infections can give vague symptoms. But sometimes it has been figured out that chronic Lyme disease can give symptoms of musculoskeletal pain, joint pains and children. Idea here to treat this problem is again taking care of overall well-being, gut health seriously and improving the gut health of the child. Because when gut health is good, overall recovery will be better. The child will be able to fight the viruses well, the bacteria as well, and the child would be normal again. The next condition is paraneoplastic syndrome. Rarely, cancers in children can cause musculoskeletal pain through paraneoplastic syndrome. In this condition, the immune response of cancer can impact the musculoskeletal system of the child, giving the symptoms of pain and discomfort in joints and muscles. The treatment for this again lies in physical activity. The more physically active is, the better would be the chances of preventing and reducing the musculoskeletal pain that is felt post-cancer. Since cancer effect stays longer, it might take little more time for these muscles to overcome these challenges. That's why this musculoskeletal pain can last for more than six months or even year. But with patient approach, regular exercises, this condition can be managed very well. Juveline arthritis. Many a times, a child who suffers from juveline arthritis 
after attaining puberty can still continue experiencing joint pain and musculoskeletal pain. Arthritis again requires a medical approach and requires a collaborative treatment not only from physiotherapy end but at the same time medical end as well. So here the idea is to get your child diagnosed well and then collaboratively physiotherapist and rheumatologist or else a pediatric orthopedician can help your child to overcome your pain. The next condition psychological factors. Yes, psychological factors can manifest in the form of pain many a times in children. And this we have seen in our clinical experience many a times. Bullying, stress, peer pressure, all of these things can impact the musculoskeletal system of the body. The muscles can become taut, the breathing becomes shallow due to which there is less oxygen that is going to the muscles, giving the symptoms of pain and discomfort in the child. It needs to be treated accordingly. That's where a collaborative approach again works here. We need to work with a psychotherapist, physiotherapist, behavioral therapist sometimes in order to solve the health issues of your child. The next condition is sleep disorders. If your child is not having adequate sleep, the toxicity level in the body can increase, can reduce the lymphatic drainage, the lymphatic flow and the oxygenation flow in the bloodstream, giving the symptoms of musculoskeletal aches and pains. Due to exam pressure, your child is not staying awake for long. If he or she is staying awake for long, he should also have adequate amount of sleep. Your sleep matters a lot here. Educate your child to sleep well. The next condition due to which the child can experience musculoskeletal pain and that is infections. Certain infections can musculoskeletal pain in children. Joint based infections cause for pain not only initially but later on after healing process as well. Conditions like viral myositis, osteomyelitis, can give significant muscle pain in a child. It's again ideal to see a doctor, identify the cause of infection, get rid of that infection first. While the child is recovering from infection, it's very crucial that he or she physically active. Other joints in the body which don't have infection, they should be moved well, they should be exercised well, so that there is no stiffness developed. Once the stiffness is not developed, the body is flexible enough, well coordinated enough, the muscles are in the position of free movement, the pain level will significantly reduce. That's the solution to this problem. These were the 15 different conditions that are less known about, especially when it comes to teenagers and children's pain or musculoskeletal disorder. In my previous videos where I have discussed about back pain in children, knee pain in children, I have got so many comments from a lot of parents who are concerned about the musculoskeletal pain that your, their child is experiencing. My message to them is don't ignore this pain. Find the right therapist for your child and start working on the pain management as soon as possible. If you have any other comments, feedbacks or any other special topics that you want us to make video on, make sure to put that in the comment section below. We would love to make videos around it. Thank you.